<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. You know, and I think that's one of the things that I've been guilty of, and I know a lot of other people have been guilty of it too, just to totally come clean. I defend pot so much that I never look at the potential negative consequences of people doing pot if they're too young. Because I didn't do it when I was young. I mean, I did a few times. Maybe like a handful of times before I was 30. And then when I was 30, I met Eddie Bravo. And we started getting blazed all the time. And it just really? changed the entire the way I looked at pot. I smoked pot was 14. I, well, I definitely smoked it younger than that. I smoked it when I was eight. I, my stepdad gave me some when I was eight, <laughs> just to a puff, because I was curious. I was like, what, what, what happens when you do it? He goes, do you want to try it? I said, how much should I breathe in? He goes, don't breathe in a lot. Just breathe in a little bit. This is obviously like sketchy memory. I did right. it once when I was eight. Right. And then the next time I did it, I was probably like 14. No. And then I did it probably maybe again when I, I was did 17. about 14. When we cut school and some of the kids, a couple of kids that were the cool guys that I, you know, kind of took a liking to me and I was like, cool, the cool kids like me, I'm going to go <laughs> hang out with these dudes. And they smoke weed. And I remember I hit it and very, and they would tell me like, Is, have you ever smoked weed? No, I never smoked weed. I mean, nothing might happen to you the first time. But I remember vividly hitting this joint with these dudes and literally spending probably an hour and 30 minutes laughing my balls off at nothing. <laughs> And I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Uh, and from then on, I like I quit baseball. I oh no! Quit, I quit pop Warner football. No. I became an artist. Well, <laughs> I started I drawing and painting on walls. I was like, I was a different person. That changed my life. Weed is another thing that's probably semi responsible for my path. I had a very important moment when I was sixteen. Like I had only smoked weed a handful of times before I was thirty years old. Like less than twelve. Like legitimately. And uh, one time when I was 16, it was me and my girlfriend and my best friend. We went over to her house, and uh, I had stole some weed from my stepdad. And we had rolled up a joint. And we got so high, we were teleporting. We would, like, find ourselves in the kitchen. Astral we'd, planning type we'd shit. We'd all be staring at each other on the couch, and then all of a sudden we'd be in the backyard. We were barbecued. We were, we were fucking 16. I think my girlfriend at the time was 15, and Josh was my age. He was, he was 16, and we were just time traveling all over the fucking building. It was, we were way too high. That's how I described the, fir the, the first and only time I ever smoked dust. Oh Jesus! You did that? Well, I hung out with like when I was the, one of the neighborhoods I moved into. <laughs> How, do you? This, is there a fucking gateway drug to dust? And tell me <laughs> yes, what it is. Yes, it's called Cholos. <laughs> it's so did called they go Cholos. Right, did they go right uh, from Diet Pepsi to dust? I don't know. Like, how but do here's, they... here's 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 my story. Is I moved onto this street called Independence Avenue in in the Valley. It's like West Valley, kind of DeSoto Sherman Way ish. And it was heavily Latino neighborhood, and like we moved in, and it was cool. I mean, like I lived, there, I came friends with a lot of people, but like, um, I went from like the end of elementary school into junior high, right in that era. So like, once we hit the junior high, it's like a lot of the, the Mexican kids I was hanging out with started hanging out with the little bit older Mexican kids, and a lot of them were dealing in like kind of gang life over there. Um, uh, it's just part of the way they get down and, and so and a lot of them like to fucking do dips which is like a fucking sherm cigarette dipped into my fucking angel dust. angel dust sounds so, like a healthy choice dude it's how, it's how i wound up with this this little tattoo right here first tattoo i ever had in my life this little three dots normally it's supposed to be up here but i wasn't in the gang oh and so it's like for some reason they i was so fucked up this is what wound up i mean this is, represents what they call my, my vida loca it's like little three dots here yeah. but it's like that happened because i smoked dust because <laughs> these dudes passed me the sherm i didn't really know what i was i was like this bang and the literally the way you just described that time traveling it was like i felt like if i thought of something to do by the time i was finished with the thought of thinking to do it i had already done it <laughs> I'm gonna call my mom. Goodbye, mom. You know, it's like, <laughs> like that kind of thing. Like it was like fucking nuts. I fucking never experienced anything like oh that. I was terrified. God. I was terrified. <laughs> terrified. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. You know, it was almost like, you know what? I mean, it gave me a lot of feelings. Is if you remember the first Friday movie. When uh, Chris Tucker reflects on like somebody snuck him a little piece of dust and he fucking like it's a, I didn't lose my mind naked all that shit but I feel like I was the butt of a joke that night like like somebody gave me some dust and was like let's watch fucking the white boy fucking trip on dust all night Jesus you know what Christ I mean? but <laughs> it made for a good story on Joe Rogan so now I'm you know we're even. Uh. <laughs>